and I believe in you. And I know that whether you stay here at this company and this agency or not, or whether you go on to something bigger and better at Tampa, St. Pete, Georgia, New York, Detroit Fire Department, <clears throat> that you're still starting to ground pound here. And you got yourself right here. You got your skill set on point. You got your medical skill set on point. So that way when it goes to catching a fire hydrant, when it goes to pulling a line, you know how to do that and you do it correctly the first time. It goes all the way back to when I was in third grade. I was at an elementary school and the elementary school had a fire station next to it. And um, they had come one day to like show us all the trucks and do fire safety, you know how they do with the elementary school kids and everything. And ever since I saw the trucks, I, I remember hearing them talk about their job and like what they did. I just thought it was was exactly how I wanted my life to be. Um, I think I was probably eight. Ever since then, I wanted to be a firefighter. I also have uh, an uncle, a cousin, and, uh, and my grandpa. They're all volunteer firefighters in New York. So. That's on the island. They had a cadet program, which is you're basically their student, and they teach you how to basically fight fires and what they're looking for. So basically, education until you go to the fire academy. It's the biggest thing for me um, that made an impact was my grandmother. Um, I used to stay with her every weekend, or she'd watch me during the week or whatever, and we'd always go down to uh, Southern Manatee one of their stations over off uh, Honoré, uh, just north of university, and we'd always bring them uh, brownies, cakes, whatever, and we'd visit them at least once or twice a week. If their doors were up, we'd go in kind of thing. So it's kind of like an, always an open house to us, um, and they'd always give me the same exact tour I've gotten 50 times, the same, uh, I'd get to do the same things, I'd get to turn on the lights and sirens, get to sit in the truck, every single thing. Actually, I've come from a long line of firefighters from both sides. Um, my mom's side goes past my great-great-grandfather. Um, my dad's side is my great-grandfather. Um, I, I just love helping people. Um, I was actually semi-involved in a car accident about four years ago. It was a motorcycle. A young lady pulled out on him and of course I was the car next to it. <laughs> so I felt like very clueless. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to do. I was like, could I have helped him? Could I have the chance to help him? So about two weeks later I started looking into fires, like what they do and how they do it and why they do it. So then two months later I was actually in the academy. So. Well, I was looking to volunteer because uh, I wanted to get my skills up to par. I took two years, uh, roughly two years, about a year and a half after the academy to focus on my family and, you know, trying to secure a business. Then COVID happened and, you know, so I wanted to, you know, I, I knew I it wouldn't be fair to myself and other people to just jump into a, a paid department, you know, so I wanted to get better and refresh my mind, catch up on stuff that, you know, has changed. I got started about a month ago. I was talking to some people, um, Lieutenant being one of them, I knew her from fire school, Marcus I know from fire school as well. Um, I was talking to her about not having a job yet in the firefighter field and she asked me to come out here um, to apply and see how I'd do and see how I'd fit in. Um, and I interviewed with her, interviewed with Chief, interviewed with um, the chaplain, everyone that I need to interview with and got clearance. So I'm here now and I like it a lot. Well, actually, I like what, what Chief has planned for this place, you know, and I want to be part of that come up story, you know, because I, you know, when I was in the academy, you know, you hear stuff about every department. If It sounds like no matter where you go, somebody has something negative to say about wherever you go um, or wherever they're not. And so I know Chief is trying to, you know, build from the bottom up. 
and I want to be part of that come up story, you know, that kind of build up story. And I feel like when I take that somewhere else, you know, I could be like, hey, you know what? I started over at Trailer Estates, you know, and then potentially that, you know, those stories will get out and then people will be like, well, you know, that's where I want to start. All my dedication and time. Um, every day, um, day at 12, I spend an hour here and when I get off work, which is at 5, I'm usually here through day and night basically. I'm here 24-7, whether it's fixing up things around the station or doing other, you know, officer things. I usually pick that up. I usually go out, talk to the residents. Um, recently we are doing hydrant testing. I really spend my time talking to the fellow residents, understanding who I am and what I do for them because at the end of the day, they're calling me to help them on their emergencies. Yeah, I've uh, been on a lot of calls, more than I can keep track of. Um, some serious ones, you know, some other just helping people out and um, stuff like that. Yes, I have fought two. Actually? Yeah, one structure fire and one um, wildland related fire. On the structure fire, I responded from my house and it was the middle of the night. and. Um, I got here very fast because it was the middle of the night and there was no traffic, so I got here really fast. The wildland fire, I was here on shift. Um, uh, anything from smoke detectors to if you needed someone to sit down and talk to, we're always here for you, no matter what. I really do like this community. I really do like interacting with these residents and making sure that they understand that we're there for them at the time of they call 911 to the point to where we're loading you in and making sure that you're okay. Um, definitely out of nowhere, either, even if it's something like putting up a fence for you, you want to have no problem helping because that's what we're here for. We're here to help the community, provide protection for the community, and knowledge for the community, whether it's simple as fire prevention or how to use your allergy pen, your EpiPen, or your inhaler. Yeah. Again, giving education to the public so they get a more better understanding of what this sh how should things happen and how we are here to help you hey, because that's why we're here to to do the things that sometimes no one wants to you know to be at the places that no one wants to at the time that nobody wants to to help the person that we need to you know so I like it because then you know if i'm put on the spot and i feel some sort of not embarrassment but like a uh you know i miss something then it gives me like a drive to go home and then read up about it and then it gets engraved in my mind now i'm not going to miss this again you know because i went mm -hmm. through it and so i feel like it's it's good for us to be put on the spot and you know tested so. yeah. lieutenant cool. alvarez is doing great chief hellman is top of his game on training a little bit of everything they said is range you're gonna get the water rescue you're gonna get structural rescue i'm gonna get to learn how to drive the apparatus so it's a little bit of everything yeah. and they'll mm -hmm. teach you those things in school uh yes i have i've gone on a couple couple calls been interesting um i guess i've learned a couple things from each and one of them especially because like i said i've been not really in the uh, firefighting scene for a year and a half um, so to be able to experience how every situation is different um, and every person even you know is different uh, from the way we get perceived uh, to how we respond to a specific call um, I feel like there's always something to learn you know and that's the whole point of everything you know that's the point of life you know the best part of, about being here would definitely be the camaraderie of the family. So you're very, you're a lot closer than um, like an ABC shift department kind of. So you're all kind of working together. You, you're not working with the same people every single shift. You're working with different people every shift. So you kind of you have to learn to get along. If you don't get along, which we mostly do always. Um, but yeah, it's definitely the camar camaraderie that I love the most. Honestly, just the the ability we have to grow together as a department. Um, all the different people that we have here, I feel like we're learning how to gel really well together. And um, the environment, the environment, I think I have a really good, we have a really good environment here to grow and learn and um, all bring each other up, you know. We're, we're really only as strong as our weakest link, so. Um, yeah, I like to, you know, lighten the mood. 
you know, get people out of their shell, you know, kind of make them laugh. Because at the end of the day, when stuff gets serious, you know, we, we go into a building or any any call. If you know, if I'm going in there with you, we better both be coming out together. You know, I'm not gonna leave somebody behind. I'm hoping they don't leave me behind. So, it's like we try to be family here. So, and I know it's kind of hard for someone that just joins to not feel like family. So that's why I am the way I am, being funny and you know, mm. trying to lighten the mood. But yeah, yeah there's yeah. a time for everything. You know, time yeah. to be serious. You have a reporting of uh, power lines down. Scene. You have We've a reporting of a victim trapped Three large piles under a roof in zone two. We got you also have reporting in zone one that you have a minor lost in the shovel or lost in the storm that has been taking place. Uh, Please be advised. Report back to your team leaders for more instructions after uh, that. I'm going to grab the ABC. Remember, zone three has a...